Uh, thank you for having me here today. And really, I'm going to give um, a brief introduction to the liver disease that we see in kids and setting up Dr. Ling's talk, um, which will follow this. Um, first of all, I'm very happy to see so many of our families of liver-affected children here today. So thank you for coming. Um, so as most of you know, alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency is a rare disease, but it is fairly common. It affects six, one in every 1,600 to 2,000 live births. It is, in fact, the most common genetic metabolic liver disease in children. However, it is still rare. We currently follow between 12 to 14 patients annually, and we diagnose about one child per year in our program. Alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency is the reason for 3% of all pediatric liver transplants, and it is actually the leading genetic metabolic cause of liver transplant in children. Yeah. Um, it is a fairly rare to diagnose alpha-1 in childhood, and about 10 to 15% of alphas are identified due to liver disease that prevents, presents usually in early childhood. The most common presentation is jaundice, caused by conjugated hyperbilirubinemia in the first one to two months of life. It's difficult to make this diagnosis, as many of these children will have spontaneous clearance of their jaundice before a thorough investigation has been made. And we know that jaundice in infants is very common, so about 40% of all infants are jaundiced. The majority of those have a benign form of jaundice caused either by breastfeeding or what we call normal baby jaundice. Um, so again, it may spontaneously resolve before we've done a thorough investigation. In some of those children that probably had spontaneously clearing jaundice, we'll find that they present later in life, usually with um, blood tests that have been done for another purpose that show inflammation of the liver, or very rarely with children who already have fairly advanced fibrosis for an unknown reason. Um, in terms of prognosis of the liver disease, about 50% of the kids who are diagnosed with alpha-1 antitrypsin liver, dise liver disease will progress to significant liver disease. And what progression really is, is it's advanced scarring in the liver that may lead to complications associated with liver disease. 10% um, of the children that we diagnose with alpha-1 antitrypsin liver disease will actually require liver transplant in childhood. Um, a small subset of these patients are transplanted before two years of age, and another group of those uh, patients are transplanted sort of what we call middle age, which is somewhere um, in early adolescence. Fifty percent of the kids that we diagnose will actually not have significant liver disease. And what happens is they clear their jaundice, they don't tend to go on to have significant progressive disease in the liver. You, um, in 25% of those patients, if you check their liver enzymes, they will continue to have mildly increased inflammatory markers, but for reasons that we don't understand, they don't seem to progress to scarring of the liver. Um, there's currently no treatment for alpha-1 antitrypsin deficient liver disease in childhood. Um, so we really provide supportive therapies for the symptoms of chronic liver disease. Um, of course, in children, a primary concern is always nutrition. We need to meet the growth and developmental needs of children as they age. Um, also, children who may not have uh, clear bile drainage because they either have inflammation or scarring of the liver may have issues absorbing fats and fat-soluble vitamins. So in particular, vitamins A for vision, D for bones, E for neurologic development, and K for clotting. Um, we also provide supportive therapy for children who do start to display symptoms of chronic liver disease. Uh, we see children that actually have issues with itching, probably because things that are supposed to be cleared in bile build up in the skin and cause itching. We see kids that have ascites uh, due to the liver's inability to make a protein called albumin that regulates fluid within the body, so they develop fluid within the abdomen. And also portal hypertension which develops as a result of scarring of the liver, causing a backflow pressure of blood through the spleen. Um, so kids can actually develop an enlarged spleen, and they may actually develop varices or small blood vessels in the esophagus. That can break and cause acute bleeding. 
Um, when children have symptoms of chronic liver disease that worsen or progress over time, then of course that's when we're looking at listing kids for liver transplant. Okay. So our role in the clinic is really to monitor the signs and symptoms of liver disease and provide supportive medical care as needed. We also spend a lot of time teaching first with our families and then as with our children as they get older. In terms of liver health, we know from um, everybody's talking about the childhood obesity epidemic. We know that obese children can also have fat in their liver, which may worsen um, their underlying liver disease. So we talk about the maintenance of a healthy body weight. We of course want to protect children from developing the lung disease associated with alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency. Um, I should note that it's exceptionally rare to have someone younger than 25 actually have lung involvement with this disease. So we talk about the avoidance of smoke, uh, both uh, first-hand and second-hand smoke. And with kids, we always have very interesting conversations about alcohol and drugs. And we also talk a little bit about family planning. Um, the reason that we do that is we know that if an affected individual partners with a carrier, that their offspring will actually have a 50% chance of being an alpha-affected individual. Um, if they partner with a non-alpha or a non-alpha carrier, um, then we know that 50% of their children will be a carrier. If they happen to partner with someone um, who does not carry either of the genes, then 100% of their children will be carrier offspring. And briefly here, everybody has seen this sort of chart before. So the other thing that we talk to families about is the fact that siblings of identified alphas have a one in four chance of being affected themselves. Um, siblings of identified alphas have a 50% chance of being a carrier of the disease. So one of the things that we're often talking about is whether or not we screen siblings of other patients. Um, and really, there are some issues around that. So if you're screening well children, um, they may actually never develop disease because of their alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency. So you may actually be subjecting them to stigma um, associated with a disease that they don't truly have. And this may, in fact, uh, impact their ability to get extended life um, insurance and health benefits later on. So many of our families opt not to screen siblings of alpha-affected. What we do is we provide the same counseling for siblings that we do for the primary patient. And again, that's really about overall general health and avoiding um, smoking. 